Hi everyone, Julie Henderson here for a long, long, long overdue Ask Julie Anything. I know I promised you guys this back in, um, I think it was May already. Uh, things have just been like flying by. I can't believe it's 4th of July this weekend already and I just don't even know where the time has gone. So I'm finally here, I'm finally answering your questions. Um, I know I promised I was gonna use my new lighting equipment today, but it is so gorgeous outside today that I just had to come outside. I'm using my microphone, so hopefully you guys can hear me and there isn't too much background noise with the wind. But I have my notes here, so let's get started. The first question that I got was um, how to get started. If somebody has fallen off of the quote coaching train, um, besides just doing it, how do you get started and is there a strategy for getting back on? Um, great question. It happens a lot. Um, it happens a lot with coaching. It happens a lot with fitness. It happens with anything. When you start anything, it's it's easy to be super pumped up when you first start. Um, really, really get into things and just kind of run with it. And then as you go, the time as you go and time passes, you kind of fizzle out a little bit, and it can be hard to keep that motivation up. Um, one of the best things I can recommend just right off the bat is figuring out your why, figuring out what you want to do, why you want to do it, what you're driving factor is because let's face it there are going to be times where you don't feel like working out or you don't feel like following up with people or you don't feel like posting on Facebook and that's just part of that's just part of life you're going to have days where you don't feel like doing it and so the more you know why you're doing it and you know what your goals are um, the easier it's going to be to stick with it so if you have fallen off I mean, other than just doing it, I mean, that's really what you have to do. You just have to get back into it. Take it one day at a time. Just, you know, set small goals for yourself. Set small daily goals, weekly goals, and just go from there. Um, know that, you know, with fitness and with coaching, if you fall off the train for a little bit, and say you fall off the train for about three months, and then you decide to hop back on, you're not going to be where you were when you left off, and that's okay, but it is going to take you a little bit to get back into it, get back into the you know, the swing of things and to make it a natural habit and to see those results that you were seeing before. Um, with both of those though, with fitness and with coaching, stick with it because it is totally worth it. You know, you are going to be doing long hours at the beginning. You are going to be, you know, working out and watching your nutrition and not seeing results. You are going to be putting in long hours for not a lot of pay at the beginning as a coach, but, you know, definitely stick with it. It does pay off for sure, both of them in the end. So, you know, they are worth it, but basically just Set small goals and just do it. You know, the longer you wait, the longer it's going to take you to be able to get back into it. Um, the next question is my top three run songs and my favorite music. This is a little weird. I go um, everywhere from like Britney Spears and Black Eyed Peas to Corn and Beautiful People, Marilyn Manson. If that song comes on, like I, depending on what run I'm doing, if I'm doing a long run, I have to turn it off because. I cannot run to that song and not run in like heart attack all out mode. Um, I like Dave Matthews a lot, but I don't love running to Dave Matthews for some reason. I, I honestly listen to such a random mix of music. Uh, favorite workout clothing brand. If you are following me for fashion advice, I am sorry, but you have been completely misinformed. I am lucky that I can dress myself every day. Um, I don't have a favorite brand. If it fits, like the majority of the time, like you guys don't see a lot of workout pictures of me because the majority of the time I am working out in Hello Kitty pajamas and slippers, no joke. Um, that's my fashion sense, I'm sorry. I wear run clothes, I wear yoga pants. Like I, yeah, I, I am not the person to ask for fashion advice. Uh, next question, do you have to be vegan to be coached by you? No, not at all. Um, in fact, the majority of people that I coach are not vegan. I'm not going to pressure you to be vegan. I'm not going to try to talk you into being vegan. If you have vegan questions, I am definitely there to, to answer them. I can help you if you want to be vegan, but um, there's no way that I'm going to pressure somebody to do that. That's completely your choice. It's your decision. I do have a lot of vegans that I coach just because naturally that's what I attract being vegan myself, but um, you definitely don't have to be vegan to be coached by me or to be in one of my challenge groups. Uh, favorite vegan Buffalo restaurants besides Merge and Amy's Place? Um, hmm. We've been on a big sushi kick lately. So there's a restaurant called Samurai that's pretty close to our house that we can walk to. Um, Cooney's down on Elmwood is really good. Pizza Plant. Pizza Plant's amazing. I mean, it's that, that bee was like this big. 
Um, Pizza Plant is amazing. It's definitely not healthy, but um, they have Daya, the vegan cheese now, which is great. What else is there? I mean, Amy's and Merge are, are amazing. If you guys haven't had Merge brunch yet, their pancakes are just like insane. And they have this vegan breakfast hash, which is like tofu, lentils, and all kinds of like diced veggies and dye on top, and it's just to die for. Um, oh, and then if you're coming out to Buffalo or if you're in Buffalo, um, ones that are close, Owl House in Rochester is really good. Um, what is the one? Rise Above, I think it's what is what it's called, in St. Catharines. So that's just over the border in, in southern Ontario. So that's another good option, too. Um, let me see. Ways to cut down inflammation. I noticed when I – so when I started my vegan journey, I never – thought I would ever be vegan. Um, I originally gave up dairy because I had a lot of sinus issues. And just giving up dairy, I totally thought that I would just do it like here and there. And I kind of gave it up just on the weekends or the weekdays at first. And then the weekends, I would let myself have whatever I wanted. So it wasn't super strict. And I honestly didn't think I'd stick with it. Um, I was a complete cheese addict. But giving up dairy seriously changed everything. My joints were better. I wasn't as puffy. Um, even for Scott, like if you look at pictures of Scott before, like he was never a heavy guy. He was always fit. But you look at old pictures of him and he actually looks like he lost a lot of weight just because his face was so puffy. But you couldn't tell then because it was just his normal. Um, so yeah, if you're noticing a lot of inflammation, just try cutting out dairy, even if it's just for a week or, or two weeks and, and see how that, you know, see if you notice any changes with that. And then it looks like that is... Oh, and then one more. Um, somebody said alcohol. I like a good crafty IPA. Outside of that, my diet's a solid 90-10. Um, they were wondering, you know, should I totally give it up or should I, is there a way to incorporate it? Honestly, if you like it, have it. Um, the worst thing you can do is, is totally restrict yourself from the things that you like. You know, if, if you do like it, by all means have it because if you tell yourself that you can't have something, you're just going to want it even more. It's not going to make what you're doing a lifestyle change. It's not going to make it doable long run. Um, when you get into anything, I really want you to ask yourself, could I see myself doing this a year from now? Um, if it's a no, then it's probably not that the healthiest or the most sound thing you could be doing. You know, you really, really want to find something that you can do and you can make into a lifestyle change because then it's going to be, it's just going to come natural and it's going to be easy for you to do and you're not going to dread your nutrition plan. You're not going to dread your workouts. And, um, that's so important when you're, when you're doing anything. So yeah, I mean, if you like it, I say go for it, have it. I mean, obviously don't go out and get schnockered every single night. Um, you know, but a couple drinks here and there, it's, it's not going to ruin your progress. So, um, definitely, you know, she mentioned she was going by the 90, 10 rule. I mean, even 80, 20, 80% of your diet is good. And, and then, you know, giving yourself that 20% leeway. So I hope this helped answer some questions. Um, I have so much fun doing these and um, doing the Ask Julie Anything days and answering, you know, people's questions and trying to help people out. So let me know what you want to hear for my next video, and I promise it won't take me as long to do it next time. So I will talk to you guys later. Um, comment below with what you want to hear and what, and what questions you have, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post different videos, total random. Um, some are coach training tips. Some are results videos, some are recipes, and some are just me in my backyard answering questions. So um, yeah, definitely let me know what you want to hear next, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.